Scootily doodly do, it's time for another Welsh review. Scootily doodly do do. Evening, gang. Welcome to another episode of the Welsh Review. Yeah, today we are <clears throat> talking about uh, something a little different. We don't normally do very many animated movies. We did uh, some in the past, some like Miyazaki movies. We did, um, I think we've done maybe five. Five Miyazaki movies? No, no, five animated movies. Hmm. Like, the first one was like, uh, oh god, what's the one? Megamind. Megamind, yeah. Right? Princess Mononoke, Graveyard of Fireflies, Rango. I think this is the fifth. Yeah, that's true. So we've done a few. Yeah. But, but it's uh, not our norm. Yeah, so this is The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf. It's a Netflix movie uh, based on, well, the, the Witcher franchise, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, before we jump into all of that, we got a whole slew of people in this mofo, so why don't you break it down? Uh, so, in uh, the voice talent in this film, you have Theo James of, as Vesemir, right? And uh, Theo James you might recognize from Divergent, Allegiant, Insurgent, and then he was in... Uh, you won't recognize him in this, though, because he's no. just a voice. Right. Uh, and then um, in Underworld, Blood Wars, which was a horrible, horrible movie, along with the other three things I listed. So, yeah. so this was probably my favorite Theo James performance. This is his best film. Yeah, he's, he's winning. He's on the right track now. Yep. Um, then you have Mary McDonald as Lady Zerps, and you might recognize her voice from Dances with Wolves, Donnie Darko in the Battlestar Galactica, like the revamp of it that was in like the early 2000s. Uh, then you have Laura Pulver as Tetra. She was also in Underworld Blood Wars, uh, the Br BBC version of Sherlock, and uh, Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise. You have Graham McTavish as Deglin, and he was in the Hobbit trilogy. He played, like, uh, one of the dwarves. Nice. Um, and then he was he's in the new Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon. When's that come out? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But he's also in... Um, he, Castlevania, he was the voice of Dracula, so like nice. he's not like a stranger to voiceover, nor is he a stranger to like this kind of like fantasy, fantasy world. Yeah. Uh, then you have Tom, Tom Canton as Philandrel, right, he plays uh, one of the elves, uh, in fact he plays the same character he does in the live action Witcher show. That makes sense. So he's back for this, which is kind of cool. Uh, then he's in something called the Good Karma Hospital and Farming, both of which I'm not familiar with. Um, but they look like they're okay. Farming. Uh, then you have David Irigo Jr. as young Vesemir, as well as young Ramus. Uh, he was, his voice has been used in Ridley Jones, Phineas and Ferb, Candace, Candace Against the Universe, and Detective Pikachu. Do you like me some Phineas and Ferb? And I do love Pikachu. Yeah. I wanted to be a Pikachu when I grew up. And I was told it's not a job. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, then you have Jennifer Hale as Ileana. And she's uh, a lot in video games like Mass Effect, Mass Effect 3, and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Um, Curry Walgren as Kitsu. Uh, Teen Titans, The Judas Contract, the Rick and Morty, and DC Superhero Girls. Um, Teen Titans the Judas Contract is supposed to be really good. It's based on a Marv Wolfman comic okay. from like the I think the late eighties to mid uh, late seventies to mid eighties somewhere in that time frame. Cool. Um, but yeah, okay. Then you have Matthew Yang King as Luca and Skoger, and he was in Mortal Kombat Eleven, Riverdale, and Love Death and Robots. Okay. And then you have Daryl Curlio. And I might have butchered that, so I'm sorry, Daryl. And uh, Sven, and he was in Destiny 2, Forsaken, Destroy All Humans, and The Punisher. All those are video games. Yeah. Um, and then you have Keith Ferguson as Lord Carlisle. He is the voice of Reaper in Overwatch. He is the voice of Blue Ricard Q Kazoo from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. And he was in DuckTales. Nice. And then we have... Jenny Kwan as young Luca. She was in Entourage the Movie, Ray of the Last Dragon, and something called Hack Slash Slash GU The Last Recode, which I'm sure is some sort of anime. It is. Someone's a fan of it somewhere. Uh, you have AJ Lacasio as young Sven, and he's going to be voicing uh, Gizmo in the new Mogwai series that's coming out. Um, 
He was also in voiced uh, some character from Voltron, like the Netflix reboot. Yeah. And the Crudes, this like their spinoff or in between, the two movies called Family Tree. Okay. Um, and then you have Michaela Dietz as Thomas. She's in Steven Universe, Monsters at Work, and The Owl House. That show you were talking That's about. Good show. Um, you have Adam uh, Crosdell as King Dagrid. He was in Preacher, NCIS, and Final Fantasy XV. And then you have Stephen, Steve Blum as the Leshy, right? The octopus forest monster. Yeah. Uh, and he's in Cowboy Bebop. He's the voice of Spike Spiegel. Nice. Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men. He's the voice of Wolverine. And then he just wrapped a new DC film called Catwoman Hunted. And this is based on the books, as you said, the, the Hunter... Uh, franchise, the Hunter universe. I mean, the Witcher, not the Hunter. The Hunter. The, the, the Hunter. Uh, the Witcher universe, which are based on books by Andres Sapowski. Sapkowski, and this is a screenplay written by Bio DiMeo, who worked on the live action Witcher show, okay. uh, the show The Originals, and then After the Storm, and it's directed by Kwang Il Han who directed a Japanese version of Stitch, like uh, Experiment 626. Instead of Hawaii, he's on an island off the coast of uh, Japan. Huh. Um, and then he directed some of that uh, show, The Boondocks, with Uncle Ruckus. Yeah. Like, he directed some of that. And then he worked on the art department for Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge. Very cool. So that's like a kind of little bit of who's who, where you might have heard them from, and hopefully some of these names stick out to you. I do think it's important, before we move forward, that The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf, since they are going to be introducing Vesemir in Season 2, that comes out in, what, like, December or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, uh, so they're introducing this character who, tr who trained and mentored uh, Gerald. Yeah. Right, so this is, like, his, his story. Yeah, so in, in this movie there is very uh, little little to no Gerald of Rivia, uh, Rivier, sorry. Uh, instead, again, you have Vesemir. Uh, Vesemir starts off as like a poor peasant boy. Uh, his dad works for you know the local lord, uh, and you know he wants he wants more in life. So when a witcher comes by and uh, banishes some like tiny monster from uh, the the lord's wife, the lady of the manor, um, Vesemir is very interested and decides like, hey. I'm going to be that when I grow up. Um, and then he does. But anyways, before that, uh, when the movie actually opens, uh, it opens on some random lord and his kids traveling through the woods, and they wind up getting lost, even though they're, these are woods that they've been through, like, probably hundreds of times before. Uh, and then their carriage gets attacked by uh, a lichen? That's a, a yeah, lichen? A lesh yeah, a lichen. A lichen. A lichen. A uh, Which is... Some kind of forest monster that apparently has tentacles. Tree like, octopus. Yeah, like tree tentacles and it can like crawl around in the tree like Dr. Octopus. And also turn into bats. Woodcutter's daughter. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, thank you. No. I'm okay without that. Um, so. Anyways, now that that's scarred into my brain. Um, Vesemir kills it, right? Vesemir at this time... At least with this clan of uh, of witchers is like probably the best at what he does. Uh, he's very expensive, and after you know murdering the Leshen, he takes all of the money that the one surviving child from this family of nobles has, and then is like, "All right, go find somebody to bury your family," and then he walks away. Next time we see him, uh, he is. Uh, basically, like in the lap of luxury, talking to some elf, uh, because the Leshen had talked, and it spoke specifically in Old Elvish, which nothing is really supposed to know. Um, not even most elves talk it, because it's, like, taboo and voodoo, um, right? That, and they lost a war, and a lot of their cultural stuff is outlawed now. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, Leshen being able to speak it is... One, they don't talk normally, so that's weird. Uh, and two, it's speaking Old Elvish, which doesn't make any sense. So uh, together they come to the conclusion that you know maybe it was some kind of elf magic that's bewitching this lesson and something that is more or less an elf 
was talking through the lesion to, uh, I keep wanting to say Gerald, I know it's not Gerald, um, Vesemir. Vesemir, right? Um, so they talk about all that. At the same time, in the castle of, um, you know, the land that's, that, that Vesemir is in, um, there's like a discrepancy in the court, and the discrepancy is that uh, the head witch, or not witch, but like wizard, ma magician, yeah, sorceress, sorceress, uh, is like, yo, I really want to go and kill all the witchers that live nearby. Um, they're like drunks, they exploit the people, uh, after they kill these monsters, we never find their bodies, so there's good odds that they're actually just secretly, you know, causing trouble themselves and then extorting people to pay them. Um, which, on a couple of occasions, our main character basically says, damn, I wish I had thought to extort the pe uh, exploit the people more and steal their money. So she's not too far off base, but for this time, they aren't actually doing it. And then at the same time, there's some old lady uh, whose husband died who is constantly fighting back and saying, like, no, you can't kill the witchers. They're important. Look, they kill all these monsters. You know how many fewer monster attacks there are now? There's, like, no monster attacks. You can't kill the witchers. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. Also, it'd be, like, a big war, right? Because witchers are really good at murder and are really hard to kill. <laughs> really good at murder. Yeah. Um, also, they take drugs to make them stronger, which we'll cover later. Naturally. Um... So, we got this whole Leshen issue. We got the, uh, the court, right, being kind of upset at witchers. Uh, we also have Besimir, uh, who is now thinking, hey, I killed the Leshen. I don't really care that it speaks Elvish. I'm going to go home because it's winter, and it's free to stay at the witcher house during the winter, but you also have to train some kids to be witchers. Um, so he goes home train some witcher kids. One day, him and his homies are like, yo, let's go get sloshed. So they go to a bar. Let's go get sloshed. They get into a bar fight with some local knights who are a-holes. Uh, the, the knights start the fight. The witchers finish the fight because they're witchers, and knights suck compared to witchers. Because um, they got magic heroin. You shouldn't mess with it. They got magic heroin. You can't beat it. Um, not only is it addictive, it's effective. Um, anyways. <laughs> Super effective. Super effective. Um, Besimir deal, deals, uh, never mind. Uh, so anyways, uh, they beat up these knights, uh, but the court's not too happy about that. They're like, you just whooped like five of our knights, um, we're gonna arrest you. So they do, uh, and to get out of said imprisonment, they are required to fix, like, uh, another monster issue that's going on, right? Directly connected to the Leshen. Because even though they left, there continued to be monster problems in the village that the Leshen had reportedly been harassing, right? So to prove that they are not like some, you know, bad people who are just exploiting the common people, they have to take down um, whatever's causing this issue. Uh, ultimately, they find out that it was some kind of elf thing doing it, um, they whoop her ass, right, with the mage, but then the mage double crosses him, and then now we have this whole big issue in between the witchers, uh, and the castle guard, and, uh, basically the powers that be, um, so, I don't want to go too much further into it, because this is where a lot of meat and potatoes and, like, twists and important story crap happens, um, Porn story crap. That's fantastic. Yeah. Basically, there's an all-out civil war between sorcerers and wizards. Yeah, well, there can only be one, or none of them Sorcerers are and magical assassins. Yeah. Yeah. Magical monster hunters. Magical monster hunters. Yeah. Um, none of them wear hats. And none of them wear hats. Um, Alright, yeah, so that's that's kind of a plot synopsis. Might be a little bumpy, but I hope that I you feel can like follow. that's pretty legit, man. Um, it's like, hey man, here, there's some there's some heavy stuff going down yeah. in the magic community. A gathering, if you will, yeah. but with some weapons. Yeah, so while we probably should have gone over this in the beginning for anybody who doesn't know what the Witcher is, uh, it's a series that follows again, magical monster hunters, right? Yes. That's what they are. They're augmented humans. 
Uh, generally, the people in like the surrounding areas do not like them. Because nope. um, they're like hybrids. Yeah. So this specific group is um, the the oh god, what are they called? The they're essentially like the school of the wolf. There's different like Witcher schools. Oh, like the Citadel type thing. Yeah, yeah. they're they're their place is called Kermorn. Uh, and their symbol is a wolf. There's other groups that have like the bear, the eagle, you know, the, the, I don't know, mountain lion, so on and so forth, right? So this isn't the only Witcher school, um, but it is the one that's the most important for Geralt's story because Geralt of Rivia, who gets trained by Vesemir, who is the main character of this movie, right, is also from like the same the same place, right? Kaer Morn. That's where he's also trained. So he's also, uh, that's why he's called the White Wolf, right? Because he was trained at the Wolf. They're school. like all, and he has white hair. Yeah. Uh, well, they all have white hair. Oh. Normally, uh, when you become a Witcher, well, actually, I guess not everybody, right? Because Vesemir didn't have white hair. Vesemir didn't have white hair. Um, you know who does wind up having white hair? And this is a side tangent, but um, uh. Gerald, that that girl that he adopts, she winds up having white hair. Oh, really? Yeah, she oh, okay. does. Um, but well, that's some for another time. Um, anyway, so yeah, so they're magical monster hunters. They take psychedelic drugs to make them stronger and angrier and better at fighting. It increases uh, all of their like their their response time, their um, their senses, their strength. Like all their D and D dice rolls. Just, maxes it up it, to... They're all just 20s. They only roll 20s. <laughs> they're all D20s. Yeah. Well, I mean, they would all be D20s, but they'd only roll 20s on the gotcha, D20s. Gotcha. Okay. I clearly don't understand dice. Or That's okay. Or dragons. But anyway, yes, everything you said is accurate. Yeah. So they're just spiking crits the whole time, right? Um, spiking crits? Spiking crits. If they were D6s, we call them box cars. Box cars. If you get two sixes. Okay. Uh, if you're selling... Never mind. Uh, we're gonna keep going. Uh, in terms, in terms of this, right? Like, I think, I think this was a very smart move for Netflix to do. Simply yeah. Because, like, when The Witcher dropped, right? Uh, it was such a success, and people instantly wanted like more of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Game of Thrones, I think, kind of uh, revamped that whole interest in fantasy, fantasy lore. And yeah. then The Witcher came about as Game of Thrones ended, so it fills that slot, mm -hmm. and then it was a hit, and then new seasons were coming, and they're talking about Vesemir, right, toward the end of the season, and then in between, they give us this, like, you know, animated, what, but also it's like, it's a hard R. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's R-rated, it's an adult animated uh, feature, you know, that gives backstory to a character we're going to come in contact with in December. Yeah. So it's like a nice little, you know... Uh, introduction. Yeah, or bridge into it for yeah. people so they don't have to wait too long for some sort of material. Um, but I thought, like, Castlevania, I was a big fan of how Netflix did that. Even, like, the He-Man uh, reboot or continuation they did, like, the, the style, yeah. I think, is really well done. So I enjoyed... Um, you know, the artistry and how they yeah. made the characters, but as someone who watches more anime than, you know, than I, what were your thoughts on, like, I mean, the, the art design Stylistically, style? it's not like a traditional anime, uh, which is fine. Most of Netflix's stuff doesn't look like a traditional anime. Um, but, like, it's definitely super well animated. Uh, like, it looks really good. Um, so I, I, you know, I have no complaints about that. Um, what I liked about it is in the, I mean, this isn't related to the animation, but um, in the actual show, The Witcher, right, the first season, they don't really talk at all about how witchers come to be. Mm. They just explain that people kind of hate them, and this is what they do. Um, but in this, it really kind of did like a deep dive into, you know, how witchers are made and um, what their training process is like. Which is important because in this upcoming season as well, there's a whole bunch of stuff that just revolves around training young witchers. Because Gerald is traveling back to Kaer Morn, right, uh, for the winter. And that is exactly when you train new witchers. Gotcha. Um, 
So having a sense of what, like, the trials are and what things he's going to have to do to prepare some of these people. Yeah. I gotcha. Um, so I, it did, it just gave really, really good uh, backstory and information, and it made it very easily accessible, which is good, especially because this is based off of a novel series, and it's a very long novel series, or a fairly long novel series. I guess I can't say very. I don't know myself. I haven't read them. Uh, but it's a it's a really good way to introduce some topics that are going to be talked about later in the future. No, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. They said a lot of good breadcrumbs for people. Um, I also think the storyline, like how they wrote it, like to explain Vesemir, right? Like his own personal origins, how he doesn't come from anything, like uh, you know, incredible. Yeah, yeah, incredible, right? He just wanted a better life for himself. Yeah, and that that whole underdog story, like you gotta do some grimy things to get where you want to be. Yeah, I thought that was well played out, um, and they got a lot of really good themes in there too, right? Like not forgetting where you come from, right? Uh, what could have been, what should have been. Yeah, you know, uh, redemption when he should have uh, helped out but didn't. You know, yeah. the, you're letting greed blind him. His character, even though you don't really get introduced to him for a ton of time, right? Because it's, you know, it's like an hour and a half long movie. Um, he does have a full arc. You know what I mean? Like it, it, um, it starts with him being a very kind of greedy person, yeah. right? And not really giving a damn about the rest of the Witchers. Like you know, he has friends and he has people ahead of him that they're he looks like up to. drinking buddies. But yeah, they're more like drinking buddies and he doesn't really have any like close ties. In the end, he becomes kind of like the father of the next generation of witchers. Um, so they do manage to do some pretty good character development while they're also, you know, plotting out this backstory for a character that we're going to probably get to know much more deeply and more intimately uh, in just a couple months. Yeah. Um, I also really thought the uh, the monster designs were yeah. pretty cool. Like, the Leshen, I really like that idea of, like, an evil tree octopus. Yeah. You know, like, that was pretty dope. Uh, what were those other things? That, well, Wyver Wyvern? Wyvern. Uh, yeah. The Basilisk. The Basilisk. Those were cool. Like, all the creatures were really, really cool, and it yeah. makes me just uh, that much more excited seeing what they're going to do for, like, the live action. Like, what things are they, like, you going to be introducing. Exactly. Like, bringing. here's what goes bump in the night. Yeah, because, yeah. um, well, what is it? You had mentioned animation before, and I guess I should have said this then, but uh, all the fight scenes were super well done, right? Yeah. Like... It, in the end, there is this big conflict in between uh, the sorcerers and the witchers, right? That's kind of like the part of the climax of the film. Uh, and without going into any too much detail, there's also a lot of monsters around. Uh, and all of the fights in between, you know, the witchers and the normal humans and the witchers and the sorcerers and the witchers and the monsters are just super well done and they're very dynamic, right? Like, they all feed into each other. Uh, at least for the most part, and that is pretty cool because it means that they had like a general overall idea of how they wanted the battle to 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 happen, even without just focusing on the main characters, right? Because even while the main characters are all fighting and we're focusing on them doing their thing, uh, you know, there's other issues unfolding all around them. It's not just like, oh, look at. Vesemir saving the day. Everything's okay because we got Vesemir here. You know, everything's going to be awesome. Like, no, there's a battle going on. Sure, Vesemir is doing good, but there's other crap happening. Um, and the fact that everything flows into each other, I think, makes that makes that scene very good, right? Because yeah. um, a lot of anime fall into the pit hole of like, oh, look, here comes the main character. Nothing else matters. The main character is gonna save us all, you They're know. Not showing like the, quite like the big picture and how everything intertwines. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, I think it's also kind of really touching, you know, like the ending. It's sad. Right? Yeah. Vestemir is a very much a tragic hero, uh, not in the sense of, uh, you know, because typically tragic heroes are the, those are the ones that they die. Yeah. But uh, just 
You have to watch it to see, but he's a tragic hero because he has his moment, you know, where he kind of realizes who he has to be, but, like, you know, that comes with sacrifice, right? Yeah, he loses a lot to get what he needs to do done. Exactly. Right. So, it just just seeing him grip with that, and, you know, how do you say this? You know, before, uh, they're not exactly connected, but before... We did the, like, the Bigfoot noises, right? Like, you thought, oh, that was, you know, I thought, like, oh, it'll be a piece of cake, you know? Yeah. But, like, voice acting, like, in, by no means are we professional voice actors, but, like, that's no walk in the park, man. Like, that's, that's really difficult. So, like, yeah. to have that much emotion when you're not even, like, on screen and it's just your voice, yeah. you know, like, to be able to channel that and make people feel for you and root for you and like that's it's not a small feat and you know this movie while it is like an action and monster creature feature you know adventure there there is a lot of emotion in the film yeah you know and i think they did that very well and that just speaks to like the depth of the characters they bring to the table yeah so overall witcher um nightmare of the wolf nightmare of the wolf very good film I'd check it out if I were you. Uh, yeah, I liked it. Especially, you know, season two is coming out. You yeah. probably want to refresh your knowledge with season one. Lord knows I had to rewatch that a couple times. But yeah. this is definitely something you should watch just to get you through the slump of uh, no witchery. Yeah, on the upside, this is also, this isn't like a movie that you have to watch oh, no, The sorry. Witcher before you right. watch this. Like, you can just go out and watch this and then start the rest. In fact, that might even be better, mm. right? Because it does give you some good backstory on what witchers are and what they do and how they're made. And, and who came before, like, Gerald yeah, and, and how all that worked. And how his training uh, ultimately happened. Uh, so, yeah, uh, check it out, especially if you like The Witcher uh, or if you're just interested in getting into it. Or you just like anime. Yeah. And until next time, this has been The Welch Review. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.